Hi everyone! I'm a little bit nervous today, but seriously excited. I actually haven't sat in this chair and filmed since mid-December, so I've been doing a lot of planning, we're having building works done, hence it may get a little noisy during this video. We are going to have to overlook it because there isn't a space in my life that is not noisy at this point. It's either noisy with kids and family or it's noisy with builders. Unless I film at three o'clock in the morning and then I might keep everybody awake. Anyway, that's by the by. So I haven't sat in this chair and filmed for a really long time. This is my first time back in 2023 and I am going to be filming a full face of my affordable favourites. I thought it was time that we closed the favourites of 2022 chapter and moved into 2023, so that's exactly what we're going to do today. Let's get on with it. If you're new here, hi, my name's Gemma. I upload new content on YouTube every single week and I would absolutely love it if at some point in this video you're enjoying what you're watching, please consider clicking on the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell. So the final look in my full face of Ultimate Favourites ended up being more on the glam side. Still very wearable, you could easily wear it in the day, but it was just slightly more glam. I want to do something completely different in this video and make it more soft and subtle. So we're gonna go straight in with eyeshadow base. My favourite affordable eyeshadow primer is the one from Beauty Bay. This is their own brand. It's the Beauty Bay Eye Base and I use the shade Base 2. So I'm just going to pop a little bit on my eyelids. Then I'm just going to pat that all over the eyelid. I'm not using any dragging motions whatsoever. I don't want to move the skin on my eyelid, especially as I get a little bit older. I'm noticing a lot more crepiness on my eyelid, so I'm just using patting motions to blend that out smoothly. A lot of people ask me what the point of an eyeshadow base is. Can you just use a concealer or do you need to use an eyeshadow base? You don't need to use an eyeshadow base if you don't want to. I think it all depends on your skin skin type. If you have quite oily lids, it would be more beneficial for you to use an eyeshadow base because what eyeshadow bases do, they not only help the eyeshadow adhere to the lid and help it to stay there all day so that you don't lose any of the pigment, but it also stops any oils, any natural oils from coming through the product, which a concealer probably won't do for you. And by doing that, it just helps to make sure that you don't get any creasing on the eyelids and make sure that there's no movement throughout the day. Moving on to my favorite affordable eyeshadow palette which is the Colourpop That's Taupe palette. Now the shades in here are absolutely beautiful. The mattes are really smooth, they're not ultra powdery, however they're not as creamy and soft as some of the higher end palettes that I have in my collection. I can put up with that all day long though because the price of this is super affordable. I know that this is not readily available in the UK and you have to order a specific amount of product to get free shipping so it may not not be worth your while to order this from Colourpop if this is all you want. However, Revolution Pro do a really nice alternative. It's slightly pinkier in hue, but the colours in here are really, really beautiful. This is the palette Love Yourself, and again, it's from Revolution Pro and it's only six quid. So I'm going to take the shade Pebble Beach, just put a little bit on my brush, tap off the excess, and go into that outer corner, just dabbing, and then circular motions a little bit further up from the crease. I'm gonna build it up slightly just to add a little bit of definition. Then I'm gonna take more of that shade and just pop it from the middle of my lid to the outer corner. You know those people that you bump into on the street that just look effortlessly beautiful? They don't look like they have makeup on, but you definitely know that they do. In fact, they probably have more makeup on than you think. They're using tones like this one in this palette. So I would definitely try and get your hands on something similar to this, even if it's not the one in this palette. Obviously, if your skin tone is deeper than mine, the tone that you use needs to be deeper than the one that I'm using. But if you are my skin twin, this is the shade that you need to get your hands on. So uh, this one here in the top middle, it's just beautiful. It blends out effortlessly and it creates a really natural look without looking overpowering. So let's move on to the next shade. Now I could quite easily leave my eye look like this. A little bit of an inner corner highlight, 
good to move on to the rest of my makeup but I'm going to deepen it off slightly just on that outer corner to add a bit more dimension using the shade Rock Steady. Only using the tiniest amount of this though, knock off any excess and I'm just going in right on that outer V. Very little product, just popping that in place and it just gives a little bit extra. Then I'm going to take my favourite affordable powder and sometimes I choose to use this over my higher end powders because it is that good. This is the e.l.f. Halo Glow setting powder. A little bit in the lid, take a fluffy brush and I'm going to go over all those edges just to make sure there are no harsh lines and it's all blended beautifully. I'm even gonna go onto the lid just to make sure that everything is beautifully blended and as natural as possible. Finally, I'm just gonna take a little bit of the shade Bedrock and just stamp it into the outer half of that upper lash line just to make my lashes look a bit thicker. You won't see this shade a lot, it won't look like a liner. It's just there to add a bit more definition and make the lashes look fuller. Then I'm going to go in with a pencil brush and just smoke that out a little bit before going back in again with just the product that is still on the brush and just stamping that right at the base of those lashes. This makes it look a little bit more natural. You're not losing any of the pigment but it's just a bit softer. That's where we're gonna leave it. So I'm gonna do my brows off camera because I did show you the whole process in my full face of ultimate favorites. So I'm not gonna bore you with it again. I'll be back in a sec. So my brows are now complete. And whilst the builders were banging literally right above my head, I thought it was the perfect opportunity to use my time wisely and apply a few lashes off camera as well. Now I've shown that whole process in my previous video. So if you want to see how I apply the lashes, you'll find it in that video. Again, I will link that video at the end of this one. In hindsight, I am a little bit disappointed that I chose to apply lashes today because I am going for a softer, more subtle look and this really doesn't lend itself to a really soft, subtle, fluttery look. But uh, I've done it now, so we're gonna have to roll with it. My favourite affordable mascara is the Perfect Waterproof Mascara from Beauty Pie. I will probably use a little bit of this on my lower lashes a little bit later on, but uh, yeah, in hindsight, I perhaps should have just gone with this mascara and left the lashes off, but hey ho. So I'm gonna cover over my imperfections to do that. I'm gonna be using my favorite affordable concealer. This is the Sephora Best Skin Ever and it is unbelievably good. I will reiterate what I said in my favorite concealers of 2022 video though. If you are in the US, you have a different version of this. It's called the same thing, but there are slightly different ingredients. And because of those different in ingredients, you are going to get a different formula. So it's not going to react exactly the same as this one, which is a shame because I just think this is unbelievably good. Not as many imperfections to cover over as usual. My skin is getting better by the day. And this is just literally scarring now, which I'm taking down with my LED device. It's this one that's a, a fresh one. <laughs> popped up this morning. Thank you very much. It knew I was going to be filming today. What can we say? It's just there to taunt me. So whilst I'm waiting for that concealer to dry down, I'm actually going to go in and do my under eye concealer. And I know that's a completely different order to how I would usually do things on my channel. But over the Christmas break, I've been trying out lots of new techniques. And I found that if I want to achieve a really flawless yet very natural skin like look, doing it this way around really helps the process because you don't have any blending issues and you also don't get an overly dramatic bright under eye. If I've applied my foundation and feel like I need a bit of extra brightness, I can always go in with a tiny bit of extra concealer over the top to brighten those areas, but I find that this just works for me. I'm going to be using the same concealer that I used over my imperfections in the shade 08, but I'm going to be mixing it with the e.l.f. Camo Hydrating Concealer in the shade Light Peach. I could easily use one or the other of these on their own, but I just find that the combination of these two is a match made in heaven, not only for the shade, but also for the consistency and the wearability. Popping a bit on the back of my hand, I'm just smooching that together and I'm gonna go in with my finger and just apply a little bit underneath the eye. I'm not going in with the color corrector today because the soft peach of the 
e.l.f. hydrating camo concealer I find does the job of a colour corrector as well as a concealer. If you do want to know what my favourite affordable colour corrector is though, it's the Revolution Conceal and Correct in the shade Peach. So usually I'm quite careful with concealer, I try not to be messy with it because it does have to blend into my foundation. Doing it this way just means I can get it on a little bit quicker and not have to faff around with it so much, not have to be so neat and tidy. I just just whack it on and try and blend it out with my fingers but it doesn't matter if I blend it down my cheeks a little bit too much because it's going to be covered over. That's how I do it at the minute. And again I'm going to wait for that to dry down a little bit before I go in with any sort of powder underneath my eye because I definitely don't want the powder sticking to any dampness underneath my eye and creating a cakey mess. Oh no no. So whilst I'm waiting for that to dry down I'm going to take some of my Revolution Ultra Cream Bronzer. Now this is in the shade Light because I'm wanting more of a subtle look today and I'm going to apply it directly around my forehead and slightly underneath my cheekbones and underneath my jaw. So I also have the shade Medium in this product which is beautiful. I used the shade Medium on its own last time I did a full face and it just looked a little bit too heavy for me. Sometimes I mix the two shades together but today because I want something more soft and subtle I'm just going in with the shade light. Again not being very careful with this I'm just getting it on and blending it out slightly but only slightly. Over Christmas I was trying out a few techniques with doing my jaw and I took my bronzer a little bit too high up and it looked like I was growing a beard so um, yeah it wasn't a great look for me. I kept looking in the mirror and going oh no. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's all trial and error. You have to find the technique that works for you. I definitely like to add a bit under this area here. I am going to have to bronze my neck doing this, but I just find it helps to really snatch everything in. And I saw JLo do it. So if it's all right for JLo, it's okay for me. I'm also going to pop a little bit down the sides of my nose to try and straighten it off a little bit because as you'll see my nose is at an angle. I've broken it twice in my life, both when I was really small so it sort of healed slightly skew with. And then I'm going to pop a bit on the end of my nose to just shorten that a little bit, lift it up and then a tiny bit across the bridge. You can do so much with contour. I'm not claiming to be an expert on this. I am no makeup artist. However, just play around with it and see what works best for the shape of your face. You may decide to skip this step altogether, but have a play around with it. It's only makeup, you can wash it off. So here's the drawback of doing your contour first rather than your foundation. It is a slightly lengthier process applying the foundation because you have to apply in the areas where you have no contour product first, blend that out and then go over your contour and blend that out seamlessly. So it's a slightly lengthier process, but it is so worth it. So I'm gonna take my Physician's Formula Butter Believe It foundation, which is my favorite affordable foundation. In fact, this actually stayed in my favorites little tub that I have on my desk and it stayed there throughout the entire of Christmas. This is the one that I was wearing throughout the holiday season and uh, I just thought it looked beautiful. It's in the shade Fair to Light, which I'm not gonna lie, this is my summer shade. This is the shade that I feel most comfortable in. I love my skin when it's this shade. It just, it gives me that summer vibe glow. This is not the shade of my skin at the moment. We are gonna have to overlook it. I am gonna have different shade arms to my face and neck. I do love this foundation, so we're gonna run with it. We're just gonna go with it and hope for the best. So I'm gonna pop a little bit on the back of my hand and take a really small brush and go around the areas that don't have any contour. And I'm applying very, very little because I am going to have a larger brush that I'm going to go in with foundation and go over those areas with contour 
and it's obviously going to smudge into the areas that I've already done so applying very little is key. So once I have foundation on all the areas without contour I'm going to take my BK Beauty 109 brush and just take a little bit of foundation on that brush. This is a smaller brush for around the hairline. I, after the last video where I got a lot of the bronzer in my hair I decided to go in with a smaller brush and I find that that is far better for around the hairline. Obviously I am covering a lot of it over with a headband. This is from Revolution by the way, I think it is super cute and it does the job. And I'm just going to go over with a very small amount of the foundation and tap over that area. Might not be an issue for you if you have dark hair but if you have really blonde hair like me, it's a problem. I'm gonna go in over that contour underneath the cheekbone and blend in an upward motion, making sure I don't drag that contour down. And then some people put a powder contour over the top. I'm not gonna do that today. I understand why people do it if you want slightly more of an exaggerated contour, but I want it to be as soft as physically possible. So I might go in with a bit of bronzer just to warm everything up, but I'm definitely not gonna go in with a, a powder contour product. Then I'm gonna take my BK Beauty 101 brush with no product on it whatsoever and start dabbing just to make sure everything is blended out. I know I haven't done my nose yet. It is coming. So I'm gonna go over with the same brush that I did my foundation the first time round and just dab over the contour on my nose. Just dab, 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 just to blend that out making sure to go all the way up to the brow. Then I'm gonna take my 101 brush and just make sure that everything is blended out beautifully. Look at the glow on my skin, how beautiful is that? Now I'm gonna take it down a notch and set everything in place. Just gonna go underneath my eyes to check that one, there's no creasing, which there wasn't anyway, but two, that everything is completely dry, no tackiness whatsoever before I go in with some powder. And once again, I'm using my Halo Glow setting powder. I'm gonna take a powder puff, just put a little bit in the lid and smush that around. Make sure that there's not too much product on the powder puff and then go in underneath the eye and really press that firmly. And then I'm gonna do exactly the same over the rest of my face, just concentrating on those oilier areas. If you don't have any oilier areas, you might not need to do this. I like to make sure I get as much longevity out of the foundation and out of the overall look as physically possible. So T-zone is definitely important for me. And because this is such a beautiful powder, it does give you that soft glow finish. You're not taking away masses of the shine, but it's just dimming it down a little bit. I need to finish off my eye look, so I'm gonna go back into the ColourPop That's Taupe palette, dip into the shade Pebble Beach with a small fluffy brush, look up and just dust that underneath that lower lash line. But I'm not gonna use any liners today. So I just want this to be my liner as well as giving that soft smoky effect. So, so pretty. To avoid the eye look being a little bit too top heavy, not that I think it is, I really like it without mascara on the lower lashes. Just to even it out a little bit, I am going to put a little bit of my favorite affordable mascara on my lower lashes, the tiniest amount. The product I'm using is of course from Beauty Pie and it's the perfect waterproof mascara. I'm just going to pad that on my lower lashes because I do not want a lot of product on there. Just want to make sure that they all stay separated and they stand out just a little bit more. Because of the slight warmth of my Ultra Cream Bronzer from Revolution, I don't actually feel the need to apply a powder bronzer over the top. If you are wondering what my favorite affordable powder bronzer is though, it is from Beauty Pie. It's the Awesome Bronze Powder Bronze. 
This is the lightest shade that they do in the shade Sunnyside, but I do have the deeper shade as well, which I've got in the little pop out. I haven't bought two of the outer things because, you know, I'm a little bit more frugal with my money. I like to just swap them out as I see fit and then pop it back in the container when I'm done with it. But this one in the shade Goldilocks is the warmer tone, slightly deeper one. So if I'm wanting something bronzier in the summer, Goldilocks is the one that I go for. But in the winter, definitely the shade Sunnyside is my go-to. Should I put some on? No, no, Gemma, just stop. Stop where you are, let's move on to blush. I'm going to use the Milani Rose Powder Blush in the shade 11 Blossom Time Rose for this video today. It is the most divine shade. It is so, so pretty. It just gives you that lovely girly flush. I've decided against a liquid blush today, although I adore the uh, Made by Mitchell liquid blushes. This one in the shade Melon Sorbet is delicious. It is definitely my favorite that he does. Check it out if you haven't checked out any of his blushes already. They are punchy, they seriously are, but you can apply them on bare skin, a full face of makeup. They even apply well over the top of powder. So definitely recommend them. But today, subtlety is key, I think. So I'm going to take a little brush. I mean, I say subtlety. This packs a punch on the pigment as well but uh, just in case I over apply, which I tend to do, as you all know, I just want to be able to blend this out slightly better with a translucent powder over the top, just in case. Look how gorgeous that is. Super, super stunning. This just makes my heart sing. It is the most flattering shade. It is so easy to apply. I'm not swiping this. I'm not swirling this. I'm just dabbing this on. It, it's just lovely. Really, truly is. Almost completed. Just to make everything seamless. Not that, you know, it's not a bad job already. It still looks beautiful, but I just want to melt everything into the skin, taking a little bit of my e.l.f. Halo Glow powder, really big powder brush, and just buffing out any harsh lines or anywhere that I just feel could do with melting into the skin a little bit more. Gorgeous, moving on to lips. Lining my lips and filling them in actually using the Line Loud Lip Liner from NYX in the shade Global Citizen. And I just like to blend out any of the harsh lines that I've created with my lip liner with my finger and just blend everything in. So if my lipstick does wear off throughout the day, which this one actually doesn't do very quickly, but if it does, it doesn't look silly. Then I'm gonna fill in the body of the lip using my L'Oreal High Shine What's a Thing. I have no idea what the name of this product is. I will link it in the description box for you. It's not written on the bottle. It really seriously aggravates me when brands do that, but this is a superior product. You would never know that this was affordable. It is better than a lot of the high-end products for lips that I have in my collection. I would use this every day of the week. It is fabulous. So just going to pop that on the body of the lip. This one is in the shade 301 Be Determined. This stays shiny on my lips. It's incredibly long wearing, feels very lightweight, feels more like a lip balm than a lipstick. It doesn't give you that tackiness on the surface, that sort of chalky dry feel. In fact, quite the opposite. This feels like an incredibly hydrating, nourishing lipstick and yet very, very lightweight. So I just love these two together. Perfect combination what's not to like, love, love, love. And finally, to make sure this stays on my face all day, to melt any powder into my skin, to make it even more skin-like, I'm gonna use the NYX Matte Finish Setting Spray. This does not make my makeup look matte. 
The reason I like this one so much is you can't really tell you've applied it. It's more of a transparent setting spray. It doesn't change the look of my makeup, which is definitely what I want. When I've got my makeup to look exactly how I want it, I don't want a setting spray to make me look more dewy or more illuminated. I do that with my makeup. I know a lot of people do love that, but for me, depending on how much you actually apply, sometimes you can make a mistake, apply too much, and you've ruined the entire look. So this is my go-to. I only have it in the little size and I'm not quite sure why I haven't purchased this in a larger size yet, but uh, that will be my next job. It will be going on my list. <laughs> I feel so bougie right now. And there we go. So that's it. That is the final look for today and I love it. Seriously love it. You would not know that I have a full face of affordable makeup on my skin. It looks high-end. These are all superb products and they're my favourites for a very good reason. They wear incredibly well throughout the day as well. And I can leave my house today knowing that I don't look overdone. I don't look too glam. Not that that is even a thing, but sometimes that doesn't always happen after filming days. No joke. So today I just feel I can look in the mirror and go, yeah, that is really pretty, understated and soft. And I am seriously okay with that. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. That concludes my favourites of 2022 series. And it is about time. So we are going to head straight into 2023 from here on out. I hope you will join me for all of those videos as well. I've popped a couple of videos over here that I think you might enjoy. Definitely go and check those out if you've enjoyed watching this one. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I really hope to see you all in the next video. Video. Bye everyone.